Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, Nigeria Labour Congress protests against Labour's ministers' alleged treatment of union officials, even as the minister inaugurates the NSITF board after a two year delay. Trade Union Congress pickets offices of Transmission Company of Nigeria in Abuja and some states over alleged poor handling of workers' welfare. Federal Capital Territory High Court Judge adjourns hearing in an application by former Minister Tete, Adoke, and four others to set aside a warrant of arrest against them. And Swedish prosecutors reopen investigation into 2010 rape allegation against WikiLeaks co founder Julian Assange. On business news tonight, Bank of Industry pledges more support towards industrialization as it disperses over 259 billion naira in credit facility to entrepreneurs. On sports news tonight, with 25 days to the FIFA Women's World Cup, Super Falcons coach Thomas Denebion bills his players for the team's final camp in Austria. And from Abuja, federal government plans low-key inauguration ceremony for President Buhari's second term in office has major activities has shifted to Democracy Day on June 12. The Nigeria Labour Congress appears to be in collision course with the Minister of Labour and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngigay, accusing him of sitting on the implementation guidelines for the new minimum wage. Officials of the union also accused the minister of sending thugs after them when they took their protest to his residence last week. Meanwhile, the Labour Minister has inaugurated the board of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund after a two-year delay. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, reports. Since the passing of the new minimum wage bill into law, Workers are yet to receive the new wage. The Nigeria Labour Congress blames the Minister of Labour and Employment for this and say he sent thugs after the union officials at an earlier protest. They're also seeking for clarity on why the NSITF chairman, appointed by the Vice President in 2017, Mr. Frank Kokori, is replaced. In as much as the president has assented to the bill on the 18th of March, it has been on the 18th of April, it has already become a law. It takes effect from that day, and therefore let it also be a notice that will further not give any notice if can take in guideline and procedure and when our alert will be seen in our tent is not made public by the federal government. I swear and pledge, swear and pledge that in the service of my country. Meanwhile, at the State House Old Banquet Hall, the Minister of Labor and Employment inaugurates the board of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund. The minister says the two year delay in the inauguration of the board has to do with high-level corruption from the past board. He says 62 billion naira was contributed between 2012 and 2015, and that 48 billion naira of that amount is unaccounted for, while 25 billion naira of that figure was withdrawn without vouchers. We do not want you to go back to that era. We call the era of the low cost. The board should not step or be tempted to step into fixing remunerations and special allowances for themselves. The new chairman designate of the board says they will be committed to sound policies and will justify the trust placed on them by the ministry. We will do our best to change the narratives and make outstanding contributions to justify the confidence reposed on us. <laughs> The new board of the NSITF now has the arduous task of redeeming its reputation. Issues of corruption between the years 2012 and 2015 have really done a lot to mar the reputation of the NSITF. This new board being inaugurated today hopefully brings an end to a back and forth between the Ministry of Labor and the Nigeria Labor Congress. The newly appointed board has been charged to carry out their duties with fairness and transparency. Kayla Megwa, Channel Television News.
are not done yet as workers of the transmission company of Nigeria today clashed with the protesting members of the trade union congress who were at their premises for picketing. The TUC is accusing the company of poor handling of workers' welfare as well as intimidation of the union members. The congress led by its national president, Comrade Boboy Kegama, insists that TCN's management must attend to the issues, including the withdrawal of queries issued to some TCN senior staff. If told them no, that cannot do. If there's any need for a review of condition of service, all the parties must be present. That is the only way you can review a condition of service. But there is a subsisting one. We have to follow this. Two, there are unnecessary queries being dished out to our members. We are saying no. You cannot because there are trade unionists because of one reason or the other that best known to the management, dish out queries indiscriminately. Three, we have cases where you just pick on somebody, transfer him wherever you want. We empower staff to install equipment and transformers across the country. So if staff had one taken up job that is supposed to be done by a contractor willingly and doing it, does that tell you that uh, these people are not happy with us? They are very, very happy with us, and that is why we are working very hard. But you see, this thing is happening. It's not without a uh, without, uh, 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 trigger. You remember just about three weeks ago, we were granted an interview where I said the discourse must be capitalized. The reason is that all the effort that we have been doing at addressing the problem of the power sector is not addressing the issue of the discourse. And the failure or lack of performance of the discourse is affecting our equipments and is making our investment unsustainable. And that's why we make that, uh, that, that, that statement. Is it, is it just a mere coincidence that we made this serious statement that uh, we are having this kind of people coming? So this is what I just want to tell you. You need to look at those two and marry them together and you will see the kind of people who are behaving like this. We're now being joined on the news at 10 by the NLC president, Mr. Ayuba Waba, to look at some of the issues that came up today. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us on the News at 10. Let's begin with the protests on thank the minimum wage. What is responsible for today's protest after Labour indeed had commended the President for assenting to the bill? Well, uh, thank you very much, Gimba. Uh, the protest of today is essentially uh, to protest the brutality meted against workers by the Minister of Labour, uh, Ngigi, when workers and organized labor processes to his official resident, particularly on Wednesday. Uh, the right to protest and the right to peaceful assembly is a universal right that workers have been able to exercise all over the world. And therefore, as public officer, uh, his resident and his official, uh, official resident, for that matter, uh, can be picketed, essentially about non-inauguration of the board. You recall that uh, the issue of inaugurating the board have been on the table more than two years. The issue of corruption, yes, have been raised, but EFCC have done a very good work. And who are those that have been found capable? All of them are government appointees. Labor leaders and trade unions on that board have not been found one thing. So clearly, we have tried to ensure that due diligence is also done in the appointment of the current board, because after the board that served particularly around uh, 1993, I think all subsequent boards have been emerged in the issue of corruption. And that's why we are very uh, happy when uh, it was said that uh, Kokori was appointed. But essentially, the protest of today is actually about the brutalization of workers, that the right to peaceful assembly should not be any right that should be a breach. So clearly, that is the protest of today. And uh, added to it is also the issue of the minimum wage, which up till now, uh, enabling circular have not been released, uh, because by now we expected that uh, having signed, assented to the bill by Mr. President, that all implementation circular by Salaries and Wages Commission ought to have been released. Uh, but clearly, I think uh, we have received the information that uh, there is a lot of food dragging about that, particularly from the Minister of Labor, which is not good enough. And we thought that having passed all those hurdles, 
we should be able to fast track the process because it's now law. And therefore, in, in, in as much as already a law, then implementation strategy should not actually be delayed. So clearly, those are the issues. Well, well indeed. Uh, curious as it will be, a lot of people will wonder that uh, why the choice of the minister's house, his official house? Couldn't you have taken your, your grievances to his office? Wouldn't that have been more uh, respectful to the minister himself, don't you think? Well, thank you very much. It's a global norm because everybody is aware that he abandoned his office since the 1st of May up to the 8th. And therefore, as a public officer, his official resident can also be picketed. That's what the law provides. And we have seen that around the world. Even world leaders, their official residents have been picketed. Is there in our labor laws that picketing, uh, the issue of protest, is a right that uh, we have been able to exercise severally. And therefore, the essence of that is also that on that fateful day, particularly on the edge, uh, there was this information also that he intend to actually try to integrate the board without our membership. That is membership of NLC and TUC in his official residence because uh, since after the May Day, he has been operating virtually from his house. So clearly, those are the very important and conjure reason that necessitated uh, actually picketing his official residence, which is nothing that is out of place in our uh, labor in, uh, relation. Still talking about picketing, uh, also uh, we saw today what uh, the TUC did, uh, picketed the TCN offices in different parts of the country over what it describes as unfair practices. Now, how effective would you say picketing is at addressing labels issues in the past compared to what it should be in the present? Well, clearly picketing is not the first option, as we are aware. Uh, usually we initiate process of dialogue. Uh, we try to initiate consultation and social dialogue. It is when those instruments fail that workers will then resort to picketing before strike. So usually it's not a tea party for workers to resort to picketing. You recall, for instance, this issue of uh, inaugurating the Board of Social Insurance Trust Fund. It has been there on the table for two and a half years. We have done all the best we could to actually do consultation. Nobody have attended to us. Nobody gave us any information, despite the fact that we wrote so many letters. Even the Minister of Labor himself, who is the Chief Labor Officer, instead of engaging us uh, on the issue, there was no engagement. Uh, each day we hear new information, new excuses, new theories, and that is why we had to resort to now, okay, what do we do in this circumstance? We had to then pick it to draw attention so that the issue can be resolved. So my, so same, I think, applied to the issue of TSN. Uh, you could hear from the conversation that even Ministry of Labor have invited them for a tripartite meeting, uh, a social dialogue where the issue can be resolved. And therefore, if the parties are not willing to do that, and particularly, you know, workers will be willing to be on the negotiation table to look at issues because we don't have anything to hide. Uh, so clearly, if there is dialogue, uh, the issue of picketing will have not arise. The issue of strike will not even arise. And the issue of lockout will not arise because the laws have made it very clear and explicit that you follow these processes to actually express your grievances. Now, you say, as uh, your union, uh, championed by you, yourself, you say that uh, since the president has now assented to that, uh, has signed it into law, the new minimum wage, it takes effect from the day it was signed. And uh, looking forward now, what would you say are the necessary steps you would take to ensure that the Minister of Labor complies with Mr. President's as assent to the new minimum wage? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, usually, after the bill is assented to by Mr. President, uh, Salaries and Wages Commission, liaison with Ministry of Labor and all other agencies of government that have input into the process will have by now released enabling circular and guideline for implementation in ministries department, agencies, including the organized private sector. So clearly speaking, uh, as far as we're concerned, that information, that uh, guideline has not been released. And therefore, we thought also is part of the deliberate delay. Until now, labor have to protest before this is done. It's not actually expected. We expected by now there should be flow of information between Ministry of Labor, Salaries and Wages Commission, and organized labor to tell us, yes, this is where we are, and therefore you should expect this guideline by so time. But for now, we are in the dark. And therefore, despite the fact that we have made inquiries, 
nothing is on the table and no information has been given to us. And you know that as usual, labor will always agitate so that the right thing can be done. Uh, but why must we wait until labor agitates? Uh, can't we follow normal processes that a bill has been assented to by Mr. President? And therefore, all agencies and all ministries must do what is needful for them to actually avert a situation where labor have to agitate. So our expectation is that in the next two weeks, let us see the implementation strategy and also the guidelines so that ministry and department can key in. They cannot now key in if those guidelines are not in place, if they have not been able to be uh, informed about the guidelines. So this is where we are, and that's why the process is now at a standstill without those details being released. President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Mr. Ayubawa, we must indeed thank you for talking to us here on the News at 10. In part two, after the break, FCT High Court Judge adjourns hearing in an application by former ministers Etete, Adoke and four others to set aside a warrant of arrest against them. Please stay with us.